everyone. It's Dalton Lynn. So today's review is going to be a book review this time. And it is for a book called The White Raven. Now, I listened to the audiobook of this, and it runs about nine hours, almost nine and a half hours. It's about just under 300 pages. And um, it's narrated by Caitlin Kelly. So a side note, in exchange for an unbiased review, the author, publisher, and or the narrator... They were kind enough to provide an audio version of this book at no charge via a service called Audiobook Blast or Audiobook Boom. I'm not sure which it is. It's They've changed names or something, whatever. But basically what that is is a website where you can go and register your email address and you can indicate the uh, type of book that you like to listen to, different categories of books. And so every week... There, you'll get an email that lists different books that are available to you for free in exchange for a review within 30 days' time, an unbiased review. So that's how I found out about this book. So the synopsis of The White Raven, it's um, a young adult paranormal slash supernatural novel. It tells the story of a girl named Piper, a teenager. Her mother has died, and her father sends... Piper and her brother to live with a grandmother that they had never met. Piper does not want to move, so she has a little bit of an, well, she has quite a bit of an attitude about it in the beginning. She's got this snarky thing she says to her father and her grandmother, but she, she's a teenager. She really doesn't have any uh, power to do anything um, about her situation. So not, not long after she arrives in um, Raven's Hollow, which is the place where her grandmother lives, she happens to set eyes on this gorgeous guy named Zane. And now from the beginning, the attraction between them, it's pretty obvious. But, you know, she does that typical, oh, I don't like you, you make me mad, that type of thing. So while she's living with her grandmother, some strange things start to happen to her and around her. Someone wants her dead and there are some shady things going on with her grandmother and with some of the the folks in the in the little town around her. There's uh, like some weird supernaturally ish stuff going on with Zane as well. And so the more the story goes on the more she starts to uncover little by little who and what she is, what her grandmother is, and what Zane and his family are. So for my review, I'm going to preface this uh, with my scores from the beginning. Performance-wise, five out of five stars. Story, one out of five stars. And so overall, I'm rating it two out of five stars. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you my tagline for this book, my personal tagline. And so it is verbally and physically abusive female protagonist, not cool. So Lord help me where to begin with this one. All right, I will start with the positives to sort of help take the edge off this harsh review. So first off, the narrator, Caitlin Kelly. She did an excellent job on the characters and and just the overall narration. Her voice was crisp and it was clear, expressive. It was very pleasant sounding to listen to. And as a narrator myself, I appreciated her work on this book. So there's really no issue at all there with, with that aspect of it. Secondly, the premise of the story was different, and it was interesting. I liked the concept about reapers and banshees, et cetera, et cetera. And third, the writing style was good. There were no real issues with that. So now, on to the things that bothered me to the point that I had to knock the overall rating down quite a bit. So the story started off well enough, but about halfway through, and I don't know why it took me so long to get to this point, but it took about halfway through the book, where the verbal and physical abuse dished out by the female protagonist was just a huge turnoff. I do, it, you know, it is not cool or funny to continuously call someone vulgar names, to threaten bodily violence, and to commit actual physical assault, even if 
the character on the receiving end is the hunky love interest of said abuser. So imagine if the roles were reversed and it was the male character who was doing all these things, or threatening to stab the girl or to knee her in the privates or to actually carry out acts such as biting, punching, poking, etc. I mean, it's just, it's disgusting. And there's nothing okay about depicting such behavior as somehow acceptable or even desirable in a romance novel, especially a young adult one, you know, where kids are basically being taught that it's perfectly fine for a female to be abusive. So huge thumbs down for that. Huge. Not only is it uncool, but it also makes the main protagonist just a hugely unlikable character, which isn't the type of reaction that would generate interest in continuing with the series. So other things that started to get under my skin was that it seemed that the author would forget what the protagonist had said or felt at earlier points in the novel. I know that sort of kind of goes against what I said about her writing style, but I don't, I don't know, maybe it does. But anyway, for example, in one scene, she's treated to this yummy breakfast of pancakes and bacon and coffee at the mansion where she lives with her grandmother and her brother. And she mentions in her thoughts that it's been a long time since she's eaten food that she hadn't cooked herself. And then several scenes later, she's eating with the family of her love interest, and she mentions in her thoughts that it had been a long time since she'd had a home-cooked meal, slash one that she hadn't cooked herself. Um, well, excuse me, did the author forget about, about the earlier scene where she had a meal cooked for her at her grandmother's place? That may seem minor and trivial, but there were these sorts of things did happen um, often enough to where I noticed it. So obviously more than once or just twice. And then there was the mention at one point in the novel that she'd never really had a boyfriend or dated. There's a vehicle outside. My dogs are going crazy. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. So another example of such things like this is that there was uh, um, the mention at one point in the novel, the character's saying or thinking, anyway, she said she'd never really had a boyfriend or dated, yet not long after that, she talked about how she hadn't had or experienced anything uh, like she did with a male love interest. So my thought was, well, if she had never had a boyfriend or dated before, then of course she wouldn't have had anyone like him before because she'd never had anyone at all <laughs> before. And then... Um, the character notes how much uh, better shape her grandmother is in compared to her or something like that. And yet this same out-of-shape girl is somehow able to overpower a strong reaper who tries to kill her. And then along the lines of that particular scene, this reaper, who's supposed to be very hard to kill, somehow instantly dies when the protagonist pushes her off of her and the, the reaper, you know, the killer, whatever, hits her head on something and it kills her. But if reapers are, my thought was, if, if reapers are supposed to be so hard to kill, then a knock on the head shouldn't have killed her. And the protagonist shouldn't have been able to even overpower her. Now, mind you, this scene was before her powers had even been brought to life. So... Oh my goodness, there were just, there were so many examples of this type of thing that I, I lost track of them all. These were just the ones that came to mind when I was getting the review ready. So I was listening to this on a long road trip a few months back, and if I hadn't been driving, I would have started writing it down every time this sort of inconsistency popped up. It happened a lot, like I said. There were many more um, besides these examples. Another issue was that this book was entirely too long 
given the very short amount of time that was actually devoted to the supernatural slash mystery element. It was primarily a romance and one that was built on contrived, predictable encounters and anger slash arguments slash repeated overreactions by the protagonist that just made my eyeballs about roll out of my head by the time the whole thing was over. Now, the complaints listed here are by no means everything I had an issue with. These are just the things that came to my mind first. If I could remember them all, I'd write about them. So anyway, you know, I suppose fans of books like Twilight would find this an acceptable piece of work. And if you like that type of thing, then you're really going to love this book. But I am just personally unable to view it that way for the reasons already mentioned. And so that's my review for this book. And um, I guess that's all. I think it's pretty clear how I feel about it. Anyway, that's it. Until the next time. Bye.